Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm going to call the meeting meeting for uh, April 7th, 2020, Rockton School Committee. It being 7 p.m., I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, Again, this is a little different, um, but I do have my American flag, and I'm going to stand and salute it, okay? I pledge to the flag of the United States of America America. and to the the republic Republic, which stands one nation, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible, liberty, and justice liberty, for all. Justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I have to, uh, much like last meeting, which was a subcommittee, I still have to read into the record uh, the following. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting law's requirement that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberation through adequate alternative means. This meeting is being held and will be accessible to the general public via Brockton Community Access, BCA, Brockton Public Schools website, and I'll state it, www.bpsma.org. It's also on YouTube and Comcast Channel 12. The public can access this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com slash the Brockton channels. With that being said, I need to uh, I need to take a roll call vote uh, relative to the revised open meeting law. Uh, again, yes is in favor, no is, is, is in negative. The chair votes yes. Mr. D'Agostino. Yes. Ms. Azak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Attorney, Mr. Minicello, please. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan. Yes, Yes, for me. Judy said yes, Tim said yes, and uh, superintendent is a non-voting member, but Mike? Yes. Thank you. I I just have one question. Yes. I don't think Tom is on the list. Oh, participants? He's not, I just sent him a message. Oh, okay. Okay, so when he joins us, that's fine, but um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the affirmative, uh, and and one was non-voting. So with that being said, we can go go into session, um, and now I need to establish a quorum via, again, a roll call vote. The chair votes yes. Vice Chair D'Agostino, please. Yes. Ms. Azak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Superintendent non-voting. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I had to unmute. Uh, no, no worries. Did um, <laughs> did Mr. Minicello join us yet? Okay. Uh, he says he's having some technology issues. Okay. So he's working on that. That's all right. No worries. We'll just keep rolling. Um, so we do have a quorum. Uh, we will go into the agenda. I do want to thank Melinda uh, Campbell for all her efforts on this. I do want to thank, again, the entire uh, uh, administrative team, Brockton Public Schools. I know Kim Gibson from BEA is on as well. Uh, and I know Dr. Moran is on from HR. So um, thank you to everybody for being here again. I know this is kind of the, uh, the new normal. Um, I do, I do want to just share with the school committee members, the superintendent, and everybody on this call uh, unfortunately, I have some sad news to report. Uh, we lost five more residents today, uh, citizens of the city of Brockton. It brings the number to seven people that have passed away because of the coronavirus, because of the COVID-19. Uh, um, we, were, uh, we are over 500 uh, people that have confirmed cases positive, uh, and we're working diligently. Um, I just wanted to report that to you. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go to the departed and also their surviving family members. Um, and unfortunately, um, on the calls that I've been on, 
uh, three times a week with, with, with uh, all the hospitals and the doctors and the physician assist assistants and nurses. Um, the worst is yet to come. Uh, they're projecting uh, three to four weeks and we'll hit the high point uh, and then hopefully it will level off and our real dream and our desire is that it drops. But um, I do want to share that sad news. Um, as, as the mayor, I've been diligent on uh, expressing to the citizens that we need to take this serious social distancing. It needs to happen. This weekend alone, I had to have Brockton police go to the car wash in Campello and kick people out of there. Same thing with DW Golf Course. I closed it two weeks ago. People are jumping on and playing golf. That is not the time. I want to thank Mike, uh, Mike Thomas, superintendent, worked diligently with me to close the school-owned uh, basketball courts as well. Uh, but the kids are actually going up, taking the wood uh, that we installed to block the hoop, taking it off to play basketball. It's just not acceptable. So um, I wanted to just pass on an update. Uh, it's a somber moment, but again, we need to come together. Uh, we will get past this, but right now it's just a really challenging time. Uh, and with that being said, we'll go into the agenda. Um, agenda one, we've already met, we called it, um, we saluted the flag and we, we voted to take the quorum. We'll go on to consent agenda, which is item number two on our agenda. Um, is there any school committee member that would like to take any of these uh, separately? They are A, B, C, D, and E. Make a motion to approve. Items A, B, C, D, and E, as written. Is there a second? second? There is a second on that from Mrs. Sullivan. So there was a motion by Mr. Sullivan. It was properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. Um, as the chair, I will read what those matters are before we take a lawful vote. A is the approval of the March 26, 2020 regular school committee meeting minutes. Um, B is approval of April 2, 2020 finance subcommittee meeting minutes. Subsection C is the acceptance of notification of personnel appointments certified. Subsection D is the acceptance of notification of personnel appointments non-certified. And subsection E is the acceptance of notification of personnel actions, leave of absences, resignations, and retirements. That is A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, there's a motion on the floor properly second. We'll take a lawful vote uh, to approve uh, as stated. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote on that. Uh, the chair votes yes. Vice Chairman uh, D'Agostino. Yes. Ms. Ms. Zazak. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Tom, we can't hear you. I don't think he's on yet. No, he's. I see his picture. We'll go back to him. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Ward one school committee member, can you hear us? He's got to stop the audio somehow. Okay. He's got to have one of his sons around that could help him get yeah. through this. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to text him and talk him through it too. Yep, it's connecting right now. Hi, Tom. Tom, you just got to unmute it. There you go. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, uh, the new normal. All right, Tom, you're late for the meeting. No, yeah, no. We had a little all. fun at your expense, I'll be honest. No, we're all <laughs> yeah, trying to thanks. get through this. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, so yeah, Tom, good, Tom yeah. we're, uh, we, we just took a vote. We're waiting on you. Um, it's relative to agenda. Um, agenda item number two, which is the consent agenda. There was a motion made by Tim, seconded by Judy. Um, a, B, C, D, and E, accepted as stated. Do you vote yes or no? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. It's a unanimous uh, confirmatory vote relative to the consent agenda. Now we'll go on to subset, uh, I'm sorry, agenda number three, uh, which is communications. And I don't believe that there's any communications. Mr. Superintendent, am I correct on that? Yes, you are correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go on to number four, which again is the report of our superintendent of schools, Mr. Thomas. Mike, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I want to go over um, just an update on our laptop loan out um, report. Um, we had, um, it started last Thursday. Uh, we had a morning and afternoon pickup at all of our schools. Um, and then we, um, had to do another day 
and that was at Brockton High, which was um, actually two days. We did it uh, Monday from 1.30 to 3.30, and we did it this morning from 8.30 uh, to 10.30. So between last Thursday and um, yesterday and today, um, we have loaned out um, about 4,600 laptops, which um, we feel will probably um, reach close to almost 7,000 students. As you know, one per family, um, and um, some families have, obviously have more than one child, so um, we feel really good about that. Um, we're going to do another day. This, um, we have about 400 laptops left. Um, we're gonna do another, another um, loan out this Friday at Brockton High School. Um, so I wanna thank Jim Cobbs and his team, um, uh, with members of the facilities department, the IT department, and, and others that worked hard to help him um, the last two days because we centralized everything at Brockton High School uh, to make it easier for parents to come in, obviously using our school police to help with traffic. Um, again, using the safe way to pass them out as uh, drive-by pickup. Um, so I wanna thank him and his team for that. I also wanna thank Dr. Cobbs for, um, he'll talk a little bit about, uh, we also have done some deliveries to homeless shelters to make sure that uh, we were getting laptops to those students as well. Uh, and he's, he's been working with principals He's been working with um, executive team members um, and others in the district to help identify families that do not have transportation. Um, and we were able to um, get laptops to them. Uh, so I'll let Dr. Cobbs talk a little bit about that. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yes, as Superintendent Thomas said, we, we have issued about 4,700 uh, computers we delivered about 40 today, um, and I have to thank Mary Beth for taking some to the YMCA. Um, the students that are out of district, we sent about 16 laptops to the US mail, and we'll be doing the same thing this Friday. We have a few more people that, uh, some that are actually in Brockton that will actually use the mail delivery for it because they, we, uh, they confirmed that the houses are COVID positive. So we will send those to the uh, US mail <laughs> this Friday. And on, it continues. <laughs> so. Thank you, Dr. Cobbs. I just want to say, if there's any anybody uh, on the school committee that you know um, has had an issue coming to pick up a laptop, um, feel free to email Dr. Cobbs and myself, and we'll make sure we, um, you know, do our best over the next few days to make sure we get a laptop to that family. So uh, we want to, you know, it's important for us to stay connected to our families, um, and you know, we this was a. I really appreciate the school committee's approval to allow us to loan out our laptops. As you know, we're not a district that has one-to-one -one devices. So this was a major undertaking by the um, ID, IT department and the operations part of the school system. So I just want to appreciate the school committee support on this and, um, and just how, how far this is going to help us reach our families. I can answer any questions. Uh, we can answer any questions on that. Any questions for Mr. Superintendent? I have one. Mr. Sullivan, Sullivan please. Mr. Superintendent, can we get the email of Jim Cobb? The, uh, a lot of people at the Raymond are looking for computers and there's no way to get a hold of anybody. Well, okay. They, they should go to their principal first, but uh, you know, my, my, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give you my email. It, it's uh, James Cobbs at bpsma.org. Did Mr. Sullivan just have mentioned that they haven't been getting text messages on phone calls? They didn't say, Mike, they, okay. they, they're looking for computers. Because um, just if anybody, can you refer them to uh, make sure that we have their correct cell phone numbers or phone numbers? Because um, I'm probably, you know, over, you know, people are probably getting sick of my phone calls here and there that we've been trying to call and make sure we're either texting or calling to make sure we, you know, provide people more information. Um, obviously, I'm on the side with the executive team that we provide as much information as possible. Uh, so I'd rather have people sick of hearing from me than obviously not getting information. So if you can just, when people ask that, if you can ask them if they can update their phone numbers for us, and they can do that um, through their principal, through the main office um, phone number. Um, currently, we have, um, we were able to get every Brockton Public Schools principal and dean, a Brockton Public School um, 
cell phone. And we have been, we managed with Verizon to have the main office phones. That, so the, the line that goes directly to the main office is now ringing directly to the principal of the dean's cell phone. The so main office at, at each school. The main office at each school. So the main office at every school and the main office at every building at Brockton High um, is now ringing to a cell phone that goes right to the print that is in the hands of the principal and the dean to help us, you know, make sure we're supporting families and people that are having trouble with either email or uh, connecting with us online, they, you know, there's that option for the phone call as well. One final question, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Superintendent. Yes. Had, with this COVID-19, has any school department employee been uh, received it or a student? You know? I have not gotten a report on any students. Um, everything goes through the Board of Health. Um, I heard somebody, uh, there was a, uh, uh, an employee that, that had it, but I was not able to confirm that. So obviously we've been out of school now for um, coming up on a month. So any of that information um, goes directly to the Board of Health. And it, it, it follows under, obviously under FERPA guidelines and uh, what the Board of Health has to, so that I would not, I would not be privy to that information other than if somebody told me verbally. So just to add to that, uh, Superintendent Thomas, I, I do have information on cer certain households, not, not actually for students, uh, but they, I think the parents in the household that have, you know, that are positive, that's why we're, gonna, we're going to mail out some of the computers and sort of deliver them. So there are some family members of, of you know, but not, I don't know of any students directly that are, Infected. Mr. Superintendent, okay, just to, thank you. Just to, just to um, give some information uh, on the question, um, what happens on a daily basis uh, in the morning? John McGarry, who's the health officer for the Board of Health of the City of Brockton, gets notified by the DPH from the State Department of Public Health. Um, the information that's given is if there is a confirmed case in the City of Brockton, uh, and it's address specific, it's not age, it's not sex, it's not gender. Mm -hmm. The information that's given to us. Uh, as a city through the Board of Health is strictly uh, through the address of the uh, of the person that may reside there that's confirmed. Um, then under the revised HIPAA declaration by the governor, um, uh, police and fire can be notified through Mr. McGarry of that address specific so that uh, in abundance of caution if they need to report to that specific address. So um, it's a good question, Tim. I, I wouldn't have that information as the mayor and I know John McGarry wouldn't either. Okay, thank you. Ms. Mendez, please. Um, you mentioned, um, Mike, you mentioned that um, there's 400 laptops left. Is that considering the ones that are gonna be mailed out? And you also said it's gonna be on Friday at Brockton High School, but at what time can uh, they- 1.30 one, one to 3.30. Okay. And then- and that, Yeah, there'll be 400, there'll be 400 left for to be handed out there. Um, and um, again, I'll do another phone call to families tomorrow night to let them know that. And we'll also send a text message to them on Thursday, reminding them of the, um, of, of the loan out again on Friday. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Minicello, please. Hi, everyone. Um, Mike, if someone has a problem with, let's say, um, like myself, who's non-technological, um, with the lap the laptops or the, the tablets, what uh, who do they call basically for a little so assistance? I'll, I'll let Ethan come in on this. We do have a um, a helpline um, that will help students with that, so our families with that as well. So Ethan, yeah, you can see, jump I'm lucky. In. My, son, my, my son's home and he's setting me up because <laughs> yeah, he's doing all his classes this way. So so Greg took care of his his. Yeah. his <laughs> so this is this is kind of the only bad thing about this thing is that. Uh, the kids can't go out, but the good thing is I have both of my sons home, so. Yeah. yeah. So if people uh, experience uh, difficulties, as many of us do with technology, there uh, is a dedicated uh, helpline for clever sign-ons. There is a um, helpline that Dan and his technology crew run for the actual devices. And if uh, it's software, it's supposed to be that you contact your uh, school, your principal. 
It could be that you contact your teacher. If your teacher doesn't know how to do it, it'll quickly uh, make its way to me or to Kevin DuPont and we will uh, provide the solution. I can tell you that um, we've answered over um, a thousand emails just about how to log on to Clever from parents. So um, we're very fortunate. We have um, people who are willing to work very long hours and they have some language skills as well. But it, it's a real challenge. We also have um, videos, how to, you know, how to do this, frequently asked questions. And as, as we get better at doing it, we'll get better at um, sharing this information. Well, I mean, again, it's a first for all of us. So I think that um, so far uh, it might not be perfect, but I think everyone's given it their all. And, you know, we're just going to have to, um, you know, muddle along and do the best we can, you know, with um, the situation we have. Um, Ethan, thank you. Um, and where do we log on to get your joke of the day? Because I need <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> you can always just ask for them. All right. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. Any other questions relative to this matter for the superintendent? Seeing none, we'll move on to number two, which is remote learning, Mike. Yeah, so I'll have um, uh, June Sabre Maguire um, come on and, and she'll um, explain um, just how we're updating our website um, with materials and online um, learning. Um, as we're doing this on a weekly basis. She's been working with all levels, uh, along with Dr. Murray, to um, you know, make sure that uh, we're constantly upgrading it, it weekly. Um, the, the enrichment activities and the um, activities, and also teachers are doing that as well with their own students. Um, so I'll let June come on and talk about that. Hi, good evening, everyone. Hi, Good evening. Good evening. Hi. So the the weekly K eight lesson plans are uh, ha have been developed on an ongoing basis, and that is going to continue. At the K five level, Dr. Andrade and Dr. Ronan have been working with the instructional coaches to plan for the assignments, and in doing this, they're accomplishing a, a couple of purposes. First of all, we're establishing that we are um, providing resources at, from the district level. And again, in doing that, we're able to align the resources to the standards. We're able to develop clear and student-friendly objectives for learning so that when kids and their families are getting onto our learning resources website, they're able to clearly sort of connect what it is that they're supposed to be doing to a very clear objective and again, that's language kids are really, or our students are really familiar with. Um, we're also able to utilize district approved resources, which we think are, is a really important um, factor. And by using those resources, we're able to focus on the standards and objectives that for the most part would be considered as the department has asked us to do, the Department of Ed, um, would be considered review, enrichment, or extensions of previously covered material. And that has been the messaging that we've been getting from the department from the very beginning of the, the closure of our schools. So one of the things that we're really focused on now is how do we assist our teachers in utilizing the platforms that are familiar to them and their students, especially when I say this, I'm talking about the elementary level, and we'll talk about middle and high school as well, but at the elementary level, there's been less reliance on teachers communicating with kids through electronic resources. And so one of the things that's really surfacing is that Clever, um, again, you're probably not familiar with that term, or maybe you are now, but Clever is a platform that has been really promising for teachers and students at all levels but specifically at the elementary level. And one of the things that we're going to be working toward is giving teachers at this level more guidance on how to support and use those tools in a way that they can better communicate uh, directly with kids. What we're seeing is that they can create their own actual um, virtual classrooms within that platform. And again, there are other platforms that I know the superintendent and um, Ethan are gonna talk about tonight. But as far as the middle school is concerned, 
um, the associate principals, the content leads. I just, you know, have to give them a lot of credit for the work that they've been leading in this really sort of unfamiliar time. Michelle Connors, who's leading the work in science. I want to give her a shout out. She just defended her dissertation at Boston College, and um, she's now officially Dr. Connors. Um, we have Jamie Esty, our associate principal at West Middle School, leading the work in social studies, Eileen McQuaid, ELA, Melissa Costello and John Lynch leading the work in math. And again, they're really connecting with the teachers at the middle school level in order to continue to develop the resources for our kids, our students to utilize. And they're using the same philosophy around um, using our district approved standards-based resources. And that's been really important for us because we want the kids to be engaged with resources that they're familiar with and are, aren't brand new on, and again, that's on a daily basis. But to um, sort of supplement that and extend it, we're also looking at edgenuity at the middle school level and at the high school level. And I know that uh, Ethan is going to talk a little bit more about that, but I'm happy to talk about anything that's happened. Oh, we're also connecting now with the high school level. I have Carrie Klopp, who's been uh, jumping into uh, working with us to see how we can connect the work that's happening K-8 so that we have some consistency K-12 as far as what the expectations are for what the learning resource, what learning resources families can expect. But I'm happy to talk about or answer any questions. Members of the committee, any questions for, uh, for June? Hi, June, how are you? Go ahead, Tom. Um, so with regard to, um, you know, trying to get some, uh, I guess, curriculum to um, the teachers, is there any type of, um, I guess, concerted effort to, um, the, to some of the families that obviously don't have the technology that you could sort of coordinate with both um, paper packets as well as, um, you know, tablets, some sort of, I don't know, continuity or, or, or some sort of a, um, a, a, you know, a makeshift lesson plan or something so that there's, so that perhaps, you know, at, at each grade level, you know, there's some sort of continuity of material you know, going out, even though kids aren't going to be tested. I, I know, all right, my things are, kids aren't going to be tested on this, right? It's just, I mean, just sort of to, to get kids prepped in sort of similar materials um, so that not that everyone's going to be, you know, have access to everything, but to have sort of maybe uh, at the beginning of when school goes back, the majority of the kids were exposed to certain similar, um, you know, curriculum type of stuff so that there's not such, uh, I guess, hodgepodge uh, daily, uh, you know, twiddling of thumbs or, 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 or work going on so that there's some sort of a, you know, some sort of an organized type of a. So Tom, it's so interesting that you say that because that's exactly what we've been doing a lot of thinking around. And that's one of the reasons that we think it's really important to take a district approach to this around mm -hmm. sort of establishing what are the resources that we're using and then how are we communicating that to teachers in a way that those resources are available to kids, but also to teachers, and teachers have some clarity on how they can best support kids as we, uh, as the kids engage with those resources. Uh, as far as what um, avail or accessibility there is for kids, we do have to think about that. And one thing that we have done over the past few weeks, and we had this conversation today, actually the superintendent and I talked about it this afternoon again, is around the idea of print resources. And so one of the reasons that we um, really committed to distributing the tablets was to sort of mitigate some of the inequity that was obviously happening around how kids were able to access the resources that were out there on the website. And so we had those print resources available and then recognized the fact that we weren't going to be able to continue to support that um, to the extent that we had been, whether it was Dr. Murray at Brockton High School, and I know he's become like an expert at running all the equipment in the high school print shop, 
and really we just recognized we weren't going to be able to continue to do that. And that was the reason that, uh, one of the reasons, I should say, not the reason, but one of the reasons that we really decided to distribute the tablets. So hopefully that's gonna mitigate some of the equity. Um, we will continue to offer families who feel as if they need to have access to print materials, the opportunity to get access to those print materials, but we're going to establish a new system for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're, what we were planning on doing was having parents who are families who think that they need to have those uh, those print materials. We're going to have them connect with the print with the building principal. Yeah. So and, and that that sounds good that there's um that there's uh, some thought to it. Like just as an example, um, so let's say you have a sixth grader and, and you know kids in sixth grade English. So if you could somehow Know, coordinate, uh, let's say, kids reading the similar similar short stories in you know in in that grade level, so that you have kids you know all sort of reading the same short stories. So when they come back, there's sort of a common frame of reference that you know the English teachers at sixth grade level could basically say, okay, remember when you know we we, we passed out you know a story on whatever. And we were working, let's just say, on sentence structure or something. I mean, it, it, at least it sort of gives some sort of common direction or some sort of common framework. Again, you know, it, it's not that the kids are going to be, you know, tested on it or anything, but at least you'll have a lot of kids at a similar place or, you know, have worked on sort of similar projects and, and sort of similar, you know, in math or science at, at, at different levels. I just think that perhaps if there's some thought or coordination. There, know, there is, Mr. Minichello, lots of thought and coordination around that. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Thank you. I'm sure there is. I'm sure <laughs> well, I just want to jump think, in and- I have faith in all of yeah. you. So. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> and then- uh, I'm going to I'm I'm listen. So also, um, you know, over the last two weeks, the, um, the teachers have been reaching out directly to their their stu you know, their students, and they've been clear about review, um, and that was the guidance from the Department of Ed. Is basically, you know, don't introduce new material. Just make sure you're re reinforcing what we already have been teaching. So that has helped focus people. Um, so we've done that district wide, and then I and teachers have done, and that's been done school wide. And it's also been done by grade level with teachers working together and providing their students with you know, the reinforcement and working on skills that um, were being developed from September to March 12. So, I mean, it's a major undertaking, I, but I think really people have spent a lot of time working together. I know there's meetings that take place uh, teacher to teacher and grade, grade level to grade level and principals and associate principals and deans and their, their department heads at the high school and um, all working together to make sure there's a consistent message and, and things are done in a consistent way and obviously that helps make sure we're equitable to all students um, and also that's being done through coordinated through the bilingual office through kelly jones and also through special education to make sure those students are getting the services that they need as well and i know dr murray's been working hard with his you know the department as at the high school and the deans um, to put things together uh, and they obviously have to do it by grade level, by course. You have freshman English, you have sophomore English, you have geometry, you have algebra one, algebra two. So they've been working on putting those things together. So to keep those students who are in those courses to, you know, continue to review that material. So I know that he's working hard as well with the, the high school team and, you know, building that and providing as many resources to help kids review as possible. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Um, Ms. Mendez, please. Um, sorry if you mentioned this, June um, or Mike, but what are some re specific resources for ELLs and SPED that we're currently being given? I know you guys mentioned Clever, and you're going to talk about um, the other platform, but are there any specific resources that we're trying to um, incorporate for these students? <laughs> You're talking about the, the resources that are accessible through the BP Brockton Public Schools website? 
Yes, like okay. I had a parent like call me, like ask me directly, um, mm-hmm. and I, I, um, I led them to the BPS website. But mm-hmm. are there any other specific resources that we should get, inform them of? Yes, there are, and I know that Sharon Walder's on the call um, this evening too, and she's been working uh, with Laurie Mason. And if you if you go to the learning. Um, Brockton Public Schools learning page, you'll see there is a tab for special education. There's one for English language learners. And so Kelly Jones, again, involved with her team on making sure that resources are available to families regardless. Again, the special education piece is one that we've really been working on to sort of, you know, look at this in, in a whole different way because there are some specific there are some specific needs that special education students need to have addressed that obviously differ from general education students. And so again, I know Sharon's on the call. If she wants to jump in, um, she can talk about some of the work that she's been doing with Laurie Mason, our director, around ensuring that our students, our special education students have access to those resources. So early on, uh, for students with disabilities, we put information up and we have to always remember when we say students with disabilities, um, that covers a range of disabilities. And so students who are in substantially separate classes, uh, we put several resources on the website for them. If they're in um, inclusion or they're moderate special needs, they're accessing the general education curriculum. And so they would be accessing the same resources that uh, our general education students are accessing. Uh, The teachers obviously are reaching out and they're focusing on the goals and the objectives of the students' IEPs um, in terms of the the services they're working to provide long distance uh, for those who receive therapeutic support, the therapeutic support a uh, person who has been working with those students has uh, been making contact with family and with students. Uh, and so ultimately, there's a, it depends on the need of the student uh, as to what services we are working to provide. But access to the curriculum uh, has been online. Uh, I would say for the parent who you spoke to, who was having, if they were having a difficult time uh, figuring out what of the resources on the web to select, which is sometimes the problems that parents are having, uh, to, rec- uh, to reach out directly to Lori Mason. Um, and she will, she will help them navigate through uh, which resources to select from if they're not sure which ones are the most appropriate for their child. Um, and if Lori isn't the person that speaks to them directly, she will make sure someone from the special education department one of the department heads uh, will be in direct contact with those parents. And um, also, Cynthia, um, Kelly Jones, um, the um, director of the bilingual program, herself, her, um, the department heads in bilingual, uh, as as well as our parent liaisons, um, have been reaching out to the um, the students, uh, English language learners and their families, um, and to help them to uh, select the resources and also support them um, in, in how to use the resources. So um, they can, there's been, it's on our website how they can contact the bilingual department and, um, and anybody that, you know, we have everybody available that speaks their language. So they can reach out to the bilingual department directly and um, they'll make sure that they'll get the assistance in their native language. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Zazak, please. Um, I just had a quick question, and I'm not sure. I apologize if we um, already touched base on this, but how are we catering to the IB students and the AP students? So I can let Cliff answer that because he has, there is somebody at the high school, uh, Todd Erickson, who's in charge with IB, and I know that he has um, D. Smith, who takes care of AP, so I'll let, I'll let Cliff answer that. Good evening. Uh, yes, D and uh, Todd both are working directly with the uh, the students. Uh, I, as obviously everybody's aware, with the 
the changing in uh, school, the, the testing requirements, uh, the exam requirements have changed. Uh, and so we're keeping the students updated with regards to uh, the testing uh, formats and uh, timeframes. They've also been uh, making sure that uh, materials appropriate for those students are being put in folders and uh, placed in the uh, learning center for uh, Brockton High School. So we have um, kind of made sure that they're kept uh, right up to date as far as any changes or requirements uh, with regards to both AP testing and the IB uh, diploma program. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions relative to this uh, agenda item? If not, we'll move on. Uh, online learning platform, Ed Genuity. Yes, so this is the platform I mentioned last week. So. Uh, in addition to uh, what the teachers and what the district is um, supplying for resources, uh, I thought it was important to also provide a platform. Uh, we talked about this last week. Edgenuity is our online learning platform where you actually go on and take a course with a virtual teacher. Um, Edgenuity is, um, if you were to, I was on the website the other day just looking around. If you were to take a course, a semester course, it costs you about $350 to, to to take a, so if you were doing homeschooling, if you wanted to homeschool your own child and you used Edgenuity as a platform and you see some of these advertised on TV, um, it would cost you about $700 for a full year course. So we've given our students and we'll be getting the information out to them in grades six through 12 because it, Edgenuity does not have a K to five component and not, um, and not many good online programs do really cover well K to five and um, so I think that's important that, you know, we, all our resources for K to five is, is, is great that we have, but to provide something extra for students that, and for families that, you know, students that want to challenge themselves, students that, you know, want more than, than what is being provided. Um, they have the option to do edgenuity. Um, someone could take, if they want, you know, for example, could take German and take German one, two, and three. Um, and it's just, I thought it was important in, in the executive team just basically to have another option for students uh, during this closure beyond what the district and what the teachers were providing um, because it's just, and it's also a student can go in and if they felt they, you know, maybe they, they took Algebra 1 last year and maybe wanted to, you know, brush up on it, they can go back and take Algebra 1 again. Um, and then we have the administrators, uh, the assistant principals, the principals and the deans. Um, and some other administrators at the six to 12 level who will be checking on those students. So you can, they go, they're trained, they go in, they log on. And if a student decides to do edgenuity, they can, they can track how they're doing and, and see how they're doing in all the courses. So that's a, a full online learning school. Uh, again, it, you know, it's a program we had in the district that we were using mostly um, for home teaching, but I was, I thought it was really important for us to open that up to all students, six, six to 12, to give that, the parents the option of being able to choose that as, you know, a, another option for them as their home with their, with their children. And I, I just thought it was important to offer that as well um, and keep us ahead of the, ahead of the game with this. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any questions to the superintendent about that matter? Actually, I do have one more question. Um, so for the IB and AP courses that um, Dr. Murray had mentioned, um, will those, will they get credits for those? Will it so, be, will it, let me reframe my, um, rephrase my question. Will they, will they get credits as far as appearing on the transcripts? Yes. Well, everything up until, so basically term three has been extended. Um, so basically we want, we, we're doing everything, so nothing with this closure would ever, would ever be held against a student or punish a student. So basically, term three, we were in the middle of term three when we, when we shut down on March 12th. Uh, we've okay. extended term three, and again, this will go out to parents, it's extended. Um, and then we hope when we come back to school, we would, get in, we would then give every student every opportunity to make up any work to improve that term three grade. Um, a student's grade could only go up uh, for term three. Um, but again, that would have to make that decision and when we, when we can return to school and 
then we'd have to decide as a district what term four would look like. So uh, those decisions ha haven't been made, but pretty much any, any and when the, stu the, the, the Department of Ed gave us the option of for all students to go for all the work they're doing online, they can get credit or no credit. Um, and you, and basically we're not using the no credit. So every student that's online or doing paper packets or engaging with their teachers and doing, everybody's getting credit. Um, okay. Then if there's a student that's not working and we've learned that we just can't, you know, we haven't been able to get them to work or the teacher can't get them to work, they'll refer those students to um, the administration of the building and they're gonna reach out to the family to see if they need any assistance. Uh, there might be some counseling help that they need. So this is about support, not saying you're not getting any credit for not doing anything. That's just not the way we operate. Um, you know, all students who are online and, and working need to need to get credit. And then as far as grades go, when we're able to come back to school, we'll make sure students have every opportunity to make up whatever work they need to make up to get the best grade they possibly can get for term three. And then obviously we'd have to tailor um, term four to allow it to make sure that's in the best interest of students. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Azak. Any additional questions about that matter? None, we'll move on then. Remote learning, safety and security, please. I think Mr. Sullivan had a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim, I didn't see you. Yeah, <clears throat> Mike, I, I hate to be like a broken record, but the, the online school, is that still in the process? The online the school for, one. yes. Yeah, obviously it's been put on hold because of the closure, but that's still, I, um, Aldo and I talked to Mr. Belcher today. Okay, I was just wondering because yeah. it, we talked about it and then all of a sudden it disappeared. Well, it just all disappeared because right. we end up closing. No, I know it's. Uh... <laughs> so it kind of get put on the back burner so we could get this, all the online and everything, you know, scrambling hey, around. Hey, Sully, to do did, everything. did anyone tell you there's a pandemic going on? <laughs> You're kidding. No. Why do you think it's on hold, for God's sakes? You know? There's a lot going on, brother. All right, we're I'm moving sorry, on. Bob. I'm moving on. I'm sorry, we're, 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 we're a lot less informal than your, than your um, city council. Yes. I'll, I'll yes. be good. I'll, I'll yes. be good. Best behavior. I, I can actually add some information week, to that Tom, question. Holy week, you got to be good. Um, I mean, yeah, so let's move on, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Well, uh, go ahead. We're ready to go. going to be good. <laughs> Remote learning, safety, and security, please. All right, so this is important because some of you have might, might have heard that um, some systems are really having issues with um, people breaking into the online platforms like Zoom. Or um, There was a report today New York City stopped using Zoom because somebody had been hacking in and there's been inappropriate material shared. So um, we're, we're doing our best to stay on top of the safety and security part to make sure not only our students are safe, but our teachers are safe and staff who are using the online platforms. And obviously, you know, unfortunately in these times, you still have bad people out there trying to hack into things and um, just do things that, um, you know, are obviously inappropriate and they, they take advantage of situations like this. So. We're, we're, we're watching that closely and maintaining and, and doing our best to make sure the platforms we're using are safe and secure. And, and Ethan can jump in. He spends a lot of time um, focused on this to make sure that um, our platforms say stay, stay, stay safe and we have privacy agreements with, with the companies we're using. Uh, hello, everyone. I have, um, <clears throat> I, I, as Mike has said, I've lost a bit of sleep over these concerns. But what I can tell you is we have a uh, signed uh, data privacy agreement with Zoom. So that means our student data should be protected. We are going to follow the FBI uh, recommended um, procedures for securing Zoom. Again, the way we should be using it, it should be reasonably safe. I had a, a friend of mine who was, um, she's a salesperson and she was hosting a, uh, a uh, Zoom meeting, but she posted on LinkedIn because she's a salesperson, so it was public. 
And of course, she did get Zoom bombed, but we're doing something different. We're not going to be posting um, any of the Zoom meetings publicly on, on a public Facebook page or any place else. It'll be a invite that goes directly to students. But I will say that it is for that reason that we most strongly support, and that's why we purchased the Office 365 uh, platform from Microsoft five or six years ago, because we control it. We have a lot of security. We support it if teachers want help and assistance. So we're doing what we can um, to make sure that our kids are safe. But as um, the superintendent has really made it clear to us that this is a global pandemic. There are families and children who are really struggling and our job is to support our kids. You know, the, the academics, yes, you wanna, you wanna get to them, but what we found out and what the research supports is you can't do the academics if the social emotional is falling apart. So you gotta shore up the social emotional and it turns out, especially with young kids, they really uh, enjoy seeing their classmates, they enjoy seeing their teacher, their teachers uh, not only enjoy, but very often need to see the, their, uh, their students so they can keep people on task. So that's what we're doing. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer any of them, but we are monitoring it very closely. And um, I think one of the best lines that Kathy Moran had was, um, this is an evolving fluid situation and as we're learning stuff, we're adapting and making course corrections. So that's our plan for now. Uh, stay tuned, it may be changing next week. Thank you, Ethan. Any questions for uh, Tom, please? Well, uh, Ethan, I definitely agree with you that the situation is you know, changing daily. Um, you know, and, and I think it's changing daily you know, in every profession and in all of our lives. But um, what you said about providing kids with um, you know social and emotional support um, I think that you know having children be in touch with their you know their peers or their teachers or you know, their you know um, pieces of their normal daily activity before this happened is so important because it, it it gives them that confidence that the people they they care about and that they feel care about them are still part of their lives, uh, especially like you said, the younger ch children, um, you know, the older students, you know, certainly have a little uh, more maturity and, um, you know, can certainly deal with more, but our younger students, um, you know, I think uh, need that, those daily touches. And if they feel comfortable and secure, then you can do some, you know, some, some learning, but I, I think what you said is right on point that we have to try to keep those kids connected, you know, connected with their routine or with their, you know, with their classmates and their teachers um, so that they do have that confidence and they feel secure. Um, I mean, imagine, you know, imagine you know, a second, third grade or when we were in second, in second and third grade going through this. I mean, this is, this is, this is, unfortunately historic for all of us but um you know having that that close connection i think is key you know and then and then if the kids feel confident then some learning and you know story time and some math problems and some science and you know all those other things can fall into place but if the kids are feeling you know so disconnected then i i think you're not going to be able to um you know provide any of that support so so what you're doing is great. And um, you know, the more kids that have access to these tablets and computers, you know, the, the better and the more time they can spend interacting with their classmates and their schools and their teachers and all, all the better. But um, you know, thanks for everything you guys are doing. I know everyone's going above and beyond. And, um, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing your best. And that's all anyone can ask. Thank you. I, I'm I, just going to thank you, Mr. Minichell. I appreciate it. Just quickly going back to the laptops that you brought up laptops. I, I thank um, Cynthia for bringing this up. Um, we will change the time. And again, I haven't made the call yet to parents. Um, and I'll make sure I do the call tomorrow night for um, Friday's loan out. But we're going to 
we'll have to make that 8.30 to 10.30 in the morning because um, thank you for Cynthia reminding me that Friday is Good Friday. So, we, I, you know, it's, it was scheduled to be a half school day. So we will um, we'll switch that loan out to the morning instead, just um, in recognition of the half day for Good Friday. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any other questions relative to this matter? I do, uh, I do wanna thank Mike. Um, since I've been mayor, this is the third time that someone has used a fake email to send to either the superintendent or school committee members. Uh, third time was sent today. Uh, my only official email is Mayor Sullivan at cobma.us. Uh, if you get anything else, just just delete it. Uh, for some reason, some people or or I don't know what it is. But again, if you get it, you can forward it to Bill Santos from IT and then just delete it. Um, and I yeah. do want to thank the superintendent as well because, as you know, the city's IT had to relocate as soon as Brock and High was closed, uh, and they were kind of scattered around the city. They did have a core. Uh, uh, kind of an offsite at the War Memorial, uh, but we actually uh, sent them back today uh, to Brocken High School. It made more sense to have them there. It made it much more efficient. So I do want to thank the superintendent. I want to thank the custodians that again clean the IT area once again. So just want to let you know they're no longer at the War Memorial or police or fire station. They're back at Brocken High. Um, we can move on to the next agenda item which is social emotional support. And I know Ethan somewhat touched upon it, but is there any additional comments on that, Mike? Yeah, I just let Sharon um, just give you an overview on uh, what the, our adjustment council is uh, providing for our students. And um, um, just, you know, the, the South, also Brockton Public School cell phones that we were just able to distribute to 15 of our adjustment counselors. Um, and, um, and, and we also have adjustment counselors that also speak um, our languages. Um, so we can make sure we support students, uh, obviously in parents in, in their native language as well. So I'll have Sharon give you an overview on our social emotional supports that, again, as, as, as Mr. Minicello said, uh, in, in following up on Ethan, and um, you know, this has to stay in the forefront of um, how we're supporting our families and our kids through this, through this time. This is probably one of the big challenges because um, though I hear I'm saying about younger kids, the old kids are really, and one of the emails are gaggle system uh, flags and it was about a reader who was talking about uh, why should we even be doing schoolwork, we don't know if we're going to buy. And so this great impact on our young people. Um, and we are out uh, the adjustment counselors are reaching out directly to kids on uh, the team the uh, support services team that have the cell phones there uh, is the director of adjustment counselors and psychologist he is our direct contact with uh, DC and so he's been working directly with them we have um, number of cases back and forth with uh, CF and the and the schools making sure that we are um, locating kids and getting in touch with kids that are in in some pretty crisis situations outside of this uh, and then we have the adjustment counselor and three nurses have the other phones and they are of the team that are fielding calls and um, most of the calls they've taken thus far have been um, from our families who speak a language other than English. So that team is, that part of the team is uh, fielding more calls and many of them are requests to connect to outside services, uh, as well as just kind of navigating. We have given, provided families uh, with a lot of information, a lot of messaging. There are many things on the website that are very useful, but sometimes it can be overwhelming and so just figuring out how to connect to the right part of the website or navigate uh, some of the information that we've provided has, has been what a number of the calls have been about. Uh, we are sending out a text message reminding uh, families that the, um, the web has that link with all of the social emotional services that we, we have uh, put up and with connections to some of our community partners that provide those services as well. Um, and I think the next step will be to 
actually send an email to students so that they know it doesn't have to be the parent that connects to the adjustment counselors that are available. They can connect to those counselors uh, directly themselves. And so, uh, especially for older kids who are used to going down to the adjustment counselor's office or, or used to making uh, contact with their guidance counselor uh, to kind of talk through some things, for them to know that um, they don't have to wait for someone to reach out to them or they don't have to have their parent do it. They can actually uh, make those calls themselves and, and all of the phone numbers and names and languages are identified on our website. So uh, we will reach out to students directly because um, when you're older, you get what's going on. You understand your home and now the weather's getting nice and. I heard the mayor talking about kids wanting to go out and play basketball. And it, we're telling them that all of the things that make, you know, things enjoyable for them, we're asking them not to do. And the older you are, the more you get that. And, and the more difficult it can be sometimes uh, because your peer group is your most important group when you reach adolescence. And so a lot of the kids are fortunately able to communicate through social media with their friends. but that direct contact they're not having. And so uh, the more we can support them in how to, how to manage that, uh, the, the more we want to be able to do that. And that'll be one of the key things that we're gonna have to address when we walk back into our schools because school will look different in some ways and how to help prepare our students for those changes is gonna be vital. Thank you, Sharon. Any other questions from the school committee members relative to that agenda item? Um, Mr. Mr. Mayor, more, more, of a, more of a comment than, than a question, but um, I'm glad we brought this up and, and Mrs. Walter, I'm glad you mentioned that kids themselves can, can reach out as well. Um, Cause I, it, it has occurred to me that, you know, we have some kids in our district that unfortunately are in some pretty challenging environments at home and now they don't have the school to go to um, and have that support system there that they get at, at schools. And I think unfortunately too, whenever we do get back, um, you know, our, there's gonna be some kids that need some, some support from um, uh, some of the things that have probably occurred during this time and, and they didn't have that that place to go um so uh I'm, I'm i think it's important that the kids know they they can reach out as well so thank you thank you mr chairman vice chairman uh, any other questions seeing none we're going to move on uh the last uh subsection under four is april vacation uh 421 through 424 mr superintendent Got to unmute it, Mike. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the commissioner has said that, you know, we can't go beyond the 185, the 185 days. So um, our last day of school right now is scheduled for June 24th. Um, and there's been going back and forth. He is allowing, and it's a, actually a local decision whether um, schools, um, you want it to change and not have, um, April vacation and go back and get out, you know, the five, the, it would be four days earlier because that Monday is a holiday. Um, so he, that's a local decision. Um, most school systems have been keeping April vacation. Um, I know this is a school committee decision, but I'm going to be clear on my recommendation is to keep April vacation as it is because I feel that I would be, we'd be doing our kids a real disservice by taking those four days away in June. Um, I think that we're going to need those four days in June to basically help prepare our kids. You know, at that time, we're hoping we're planning a graduation um, where hopefully we can do some activities. So I feel that four days in June uh, help. We'll probably be planning summer enrichment and, and, and remedial programs for our students. Um, so I just feel those four days in June is, is really vital than to, to take them away and, and you know, add the days during April vacation where I know people have been home and working from home, but I think people are under a lot of stress. And I think having that still as a vacation is important, not only for the students, but for, you know, our staff and teachers as well. And, and, and more importantly, I, I really think those four days in June 
Um, and again, I'm an optimist. I'm hoping again that we're able to return to school this year. Um, and I just think it would be a disservice to give away those four days in June because um, we could be, you know, that could be planning a graduation and getting our seniors ready to go off into the world. And there's a lot of things up in the air. So I'd rather not trade four days in April for those four important days in June. So that's just my recommendation to the committee. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Superintendent, what would happen with the, the grab and go lunches on the April vacation? We would still plan to have those. Okay. Any All right, thank you. Any additional questions to the superintendent about this matter? <clears throat> None? Okay. We can move on then. Subsection. So we'll be, just, so we'll be keeping April vacation as in, intact. You want to take a vote on that or no? Do we have to take a vote? I don't think we need to vote because it's already it's our it's yeah. already a schedule. So we're not changing Absolutely. the schedule. We need, we need to vote if we were going to change something, but we're not changing right. anything. Okay. Absolutely. That's my feeling. But no, I agree. If we were I gonna agree. amend it, we would make a vote. If we're not amending it, it's just status quo, we'll keep it as is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank so you. We'll, we'll go on to uh, B items uh, to refer to subcommittee. I don't believe there are any. Mr. Superintendent. Um, I don't have any at this time. Nope, I don't either. Um, we can go on to subsec uh, section five, which is unfinished business, Student Opportunity Act, SOA three uh, district plan. So um, it, it, the deadline's been extended. We have not had um, the actual next date. Um, we think it's either May 1st or June 1st. So but they, um, this week, now that we're getting ahead and, and, and getting on, on top of this online learning, um, um, the executive team will get back together with Mr. Bath and we'll start uh, laying out our course for um, the Student Opportunity Act. But I think, you know, we might have to change our course a little bit and obviously take into consideration um, what we're going to have to do to prepare our students when we come back to school. And I think, you know, so we'll relook at how we're doing that and we'll obviously schedule a subcommittee meeting uh, when we have to. We still have the Student Opportunity Act email. Uh, we'll send that back out to parents. Um, basically to allow them to continue to provide feedback through email. Um, as you know, we, we were in the middle of doing that when we had to shut down. Um, so again, we're, we're still think you know, we're still be working on the Student Opportunity Act. We'll be working with you and uh, we will plan a meeting later this week with Mr. Bass so how we can continue to work. We had things in place uh, from the feedback we were getting, but obviously we'll continue to uh, put those things in place. We'll do another reach out to our staff and our teachers to, to provide feedback. Um, they did that in person, but we'll also provide, they can have that option through email as well as we continue to build the plan. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any questions for the superintendent about that? Or Mr. Bath or anybody anybody here on the call? Ms. Uh, Mendez, please. What email is it? Um, so parents um, to give yeah, feedback I, student opportunity. Is, is, Jess, is Jess on the phone? I don't think she's on the call. Um, I'll email that. I'll I'll get it tonight and email that to everybody. Okay, thank you. Um, it's um I'll, I have it actually. I just have to I'll just have to find it in my email and I'll I'll send an email to everybody with that with that um that that email address. It's like the student opportunity Act, student opportunity act at bpsma.org, but I don't know if it's um is shortened. So, but I'll definitely email that out to you tonight. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any additional questions? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, we'll go on to uh, new business. Are there, is there any new business before us? Uh, Mr. I, do, I do want to propose a piece of new business if I could as chair. Uh, I'd like the school committee to contemplate uh, instead of 7 p.m. meetings, if we're doing these Zoom virtual, if we could do them earlier. I think it makes sense. Uh, if we did them earlier, I know we talked about it uh, during the subcommittee of last week. Uh, this was duly noticed for 7 p.m. And I know it is past practice to do it at 7 o'clock. But I just want to uh, at least uh, throw it out there to see if anybody would entertain the thought of doing them earlier. I'm open to it. You're yeah. talking 6, 6.30. What, what time are you having in mind, Mr. Mayor? 
No, I mean, uh, you know, it sticks at six thirty. I mean, we could do seven. I just think that if if we're able to, you know, not drive to the little theater anymore, um, and we can go to our confines or our home, you know, if we do it after work, most of most people are working remotely at home anyhow. But yeah, I mean, six or six thirty is what I was thinking. Any, any thoughts? Six would work. I'm, I'm open me. to whatever you guys six want. Six would work too. Six o'clock. Mm-hmm. Okay, could six I? Uh, is good. Does that works? Uh, how about Tony? Does that work okay? Okay, um, Cynthia. Okay, um, why don't and Joyce, you're okay with that? Um, I could, if we could entertain a motion, then um, going forward while we're you know dealing with this uh, the new normal uh, due to the uh, COVID nineteen health epidemic pandemic. If we could, as a school committee, um, both full school committee meetings and also subcommittee meetings, if we could start instead of 7 p.m., if we could start at 6 p.m., again, we'll be doing it remotely, virtually through Zoom. Uh, could I entertain a motion on that? Uh, so moved. There's a Second. motion made by Mr. Menoncello, seconded by uh, Ms. Mendez. Uh, all in favor, um, we'll have to take a roll call vote. Chair, <laughs> I wish we could do it. A uh, chair says yes. Vice Chair D'Agostino. Yes. Uh, Ms. Azak? Yes. Ms. Mendez? Yes. Mr. Menachello? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Okay, so that's duly passed unanimously. Uh, Melinda, if you could just note that going forward, we'll do a six o'clock on all our school committee meetings and subcommittee meetings virtually. Um, with that being said, I also want to publicly thank again Mike Simmons and Brockton Community Access BCA. Uh, it's through Mike's efforts that we're able to record this and go live. So I do want to publicly thank him and everybody at BCA accommodating uh, the school committee in uh, Brockton Public Schools. Um, we uh, are going to be going into an executive session tonight, school committee members. Uh, it is duly noticed as number seven on our uh, agenda. And I have to read as following. A school committee will go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A. Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, food service union, IBAA hyphen TEA union, Brockton Educational Association union, custodial union, paraprofessional slash MTA union. We will be going to, into executive session. We will not be coming back into a, job, a general public forum. We will be going into the executive session at this time. A recording will stop and we'll be dialing into the executive session on the number that was provided by Melinda. Mayor. Yes. Before we do that, I did have one item of new business. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'll be quick. I did want to comment to the committee and, and really I've, I've heard other, not just the school committee elected officials going to the lunch sites, handing out cards, taking pictures. This is not a, a photo op. This is not a campaign stop. We have grab and go lunch set up so the kids can get fed during this time. Um, you know, checking in to see how things are going can, you know, thank you for your work and leaving is one thing, but the, the, the handing out cards and taking pictures, that's gotta stop. We've, we're, we're meeting in this format to lead by example here. And it doesn't look good when we're all supposed to be social distancing and elected officials are not doing that. Um, you know, this is a serious matter. I, I just learned a, a, a longtime friend of mine has passed from COVID. I've just learned that during this meeting. So, you know, it, this is not the time for, for that kind of thing. And, and so I've heard it a few times and I'm asking every elected official, let the food service people do what they're there to do, give out those lunches and, and the time for, you know, uh, all of that will will come afterwards. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Vice Chairman. We're sorry for your loss. Um, Ms. Azak, please. I, I just wanted to also make a comment um, because I had spoken with um, the superintendent. So, uh, Mr. Thomas, if you don't mind, you know, stepping in, the food service personnel are, you know, they're they're getting their temperatures um, checked. Uh, they're taking extra precautions to make sure that they're safe when they're handing out the food to um, you know the families and stuff. So it is very important that only authorized personnel are at the sites. Um, I mean, I have six pallets of items that I need to hand out to, to our students and to our families and I'm not even going to the job sites um, right now. Uh, right now we're focusing on the grab and go 
and eventually we will find time to get those to the families but it's all about safety especially for the next few weeks um but i know a few uh constituents had reached out to me and i and i you know spoke to the superintendent about it and he did mention the the measures that they're taking to make sure that you know chart walls are safe because they are handing the, the items out to the families uh we need to keep them safe and we need to keep you safe so it is important that you know only authorized personnel are at the at the job sites when they do the grab and go thank you Ms. Azak. any additional comments mr minicello please um mr superintendent could you just tell us how we, we're doing with regard to the amount of food you know uh in terms of any leftovers or you know have, have they gotten into a rhythm or routine in terms of you know not you know, minimizing waste or you know discarding yeah. food at the end of the day how are we doing in terms of those estimates because at the beginning you know we were sort of juggling it up in the air how do you you know how do you estimate how many families are going to need it so where, where are we with that those estimates? I, I i'll have aldo jump in but i'm i'm pretty sure we're right around three thousand meals a day um i think aldo's still on the call yeah i'm still here we're doing two thousand meals a day um two thousand um in total We've adjusted, that's been very, very consistent, that number. So mm -hmm. on Fridays, of course, we do almost 6,000 meals. Oh, okay. Um, we're, we're going for Saturday and Sunday also. But I spoke to Tom Burke, as a matter of fact, today to ask about if there was any extra food and what we're, we're using. And I mean, this is his business. He knows how to order and, and plan it out so that there is um, basically no leftover. Some of the items like uh, yogurt or whatever, they're good the next day as long as they're kept refrigerated. So oh. we have to throw anything out at this point. Oh, good. So, so it's down to a minimum. Yes, it is. Great. Great. Good. Thank, Thank you, you, Aldo. Thank you. Um, sure. Any other questions? I, I do. Uh, I was, uh, I was remiss. I need to take a motion to go into executive session, and then we'll do a roll call vote on that. If I can entertain a motion. Motion to go into executive session. Second. There is a second. A motion was made by Mr. Minichello. It was seconded by Ms. Azek to go into executive session. Chair Sullivan says yes. D'Agostino, Vice Chair. Yes. Uh, Ms. Azak? Yes. Ms. Mendez? Yes. Mr. Minicello? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. It's unanimous. We will be going into executive session. We will not be uh, coming back into this Zoom. Uh, I do want to wish everybody uh, a happy Easter on Sunday if you celebrate. And we'll be going to executive session. We will not be recording that. And if you could dial into the number that uh, Melinda gave us, uh, we can go into executive session with uh, Attorney Bresnahan. Thank you.